edit it, or maybe I'll just edit it when this video is done. We're gonna have fun though. This deck is is nothing if not a lot of fun. Like it is it is a really exciting deck to play. And it does look like the list is accurate at the moment. Let's see, except for the lands. The mana base isn't quite accurate. Uh, it runs four Evolving Wilds. So the list is pretty close, what's over there on Magic Duel's Helper, and I'll go update that in a minute. So let's get into the deck list as we're going to play it today. This is going to be Jund Aristocrats, or just Kratz, as I like to say it. All crunk and hot lying. Houston. Because I've got some Jund Kratz in the house. Oh, my voice isn't working. i got to drink some water. Normally I can do a pretty interesting little John impression. That's kind of a joke. Uh, so this deck has changed a lot. And I was really worried that this deck would not be good in the new expansion. Uh, Perilous Mirror was a pretty important card to it. And instead, what we have is kind of a lot just stronger in general cards that we can play to replace the Mirror. They don't do the removal job, so we have to be careful about getting run out of the barn. But for the most part, we just have stronger drops. Cards like Deathcap Cultivator, Sylvan Advocate, uh, Duskwatch Recruiter, they're just more powerful cards. And they actually don't necessarily synergize with Rot Shambler, but they make Rot Shambler better. Because you can cast Rot Shambler, and what are they going to kill? You know, they're going to kill Duskwatch and Cultivator and Sylvan Advocate if they can. Which means Rot Shambler doesn't die as much as it used to, so it grows pretty freely. And this guy's ability to dig for more creatures helps you set up your combos with Nantuko Husk and, um... Uh, the bleh, Smothering Abomination. Also, Tireless Tracker also fits that uh, vein, you know. It, it, it falls right into that uh, strategy where um, not not a super uh, synergy card with Nantuko Husk, but just a really good green card that generates value. And you're going to see a lot of that. It's a little different. The last version of the deck had cards like Elvish Visionary. Elvish Visionary isn't a good card, but it draws you a card, and it's a body that you can sacrifice to Husk, so it's a good Husk card. This deck has a lot less good Husk cards, and just a lot more good cards. So, it's not as reliant on the combo as it used to be. Nissa fits right in here for making plant creatures that you can sacrifice, or for buffing your team. She does double duty. Kalidus is interesting, but Kalidus plays really well with some of the other cards here, so... Um, if you want to see some life gain, if you find yourself in a pickle, play Kalidus and then Chandra's Ignition it. You gain three life for each creature it does damage to. So that life link, uh, the damage comes from Kalit Kalitas, Kalidus. And uh, you gain all the life for all the damage it does. So if the opponent has five creatures, you gain 15 life plus three more for dealing it to the player, 18 life. Boom. Plus you get a zombie for every creature you kill with that damage. Awesome. Uh, hopefully we can pull that off today. Frog Monster, he has Death Touch. So even if your opponent has a 12-12, if you Chandra's Ignite the Frog Monster, the Death Touch will kill that creature if it's not indestructible. So uh, Cultivator can also gain Death Touch in weird situations from Delirium, and it works the same way. No Seed Guardian. Yeah, no Seed Guardian, dude. I tried Seed Guardian out. I wasn't that impressed. He, he made me sad more than he made me happy. That's a mistake. Let's get some of that. In there, one two three four, one two, 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 one two. I wonder if I should really have two Westvale Abbeys. This is a good Westvale Abbey deck. It gets a lot of creatures onto the battlefield, but not that many at a time. I mean, if we get that wide of a board, we are kind of just winning. So I'm gonna go down to one Westvale Abbey. Blasphemy! But mana is the concern with this deck. I mean, this is a deck that we have to get our mana right. Also, Mountain is the worst land in the deck. It's a deck that's really intense on its colors. We need double black. We need multiple green to be competitive. And uh, if you have two mountains in the deck, it seems like I always draw two mountains, and they're basically like having two wastes mo most of the time. Chandra's Ignition is the only red card, and we keep it because there are so many situations and so many decks where this is the only solution. You know, This is the only out. It could save us if we had it. 
And just having it in the deck means you're going to draw it plenty because A-Bomb, he likes to draw cards. And so does Tracker, and uh, the rest of the deck is really kind of about that engine. So let's get it going. Let's rock it. I don't even have Active Treason in here right now. Active Treason was very much a uh, part of the ramp the anti-ramp strategy from the last meta, and I'm not sure how big of a part of the meta ramp is or big creature spells. Active Treason may belong back in the deck, but for now I'm leaving it out just to see what we run into. Seek Guardian made mana pretty awkward. The double green, um, we just need to stay away from the doubles as much as we can, and it's hard to stay away from double black. But double green in particular, we don't need to have that many things that do double green. Also, um, there's a lot more ways to exile now than there was before. So I feel like uh, there's just a lot of ways to exile the Seed Guardian and you're left with, you paid four mana for three, four reach. They discarded their removal spell and you didn't get anything off the back of it. Also, you'll notice no evolutionary leap. I'm instead using Duskwatch Recruiter and Tireless Tracker for the card advantage engines, because evolutionary leap on its own, is, you know, as a non-creature, doesn't do, uh, it doesn't synergize when it's just in your deck with the other creature cards and the cards that sack creatures. So that's something else to consider. No evolutionary leap feels weird, and it may come back. A one of probably wouldn't kill me, but Figuring out what to cut, it's going to be interesting. The deck in general isn't, it, it's got a lot of moving pieces, but it isn't as all in on Nantuko Husk as it used to be, which I think is a good thing in the long term. This is an interesting hand. I really don't like double bone splinters, but it's hard to turn away a cultivator, especially when you could get an abomination out quickly. So let's see what our opponent's bringing as we dive into a game. We are up against a 27 rank, the Heavy B, so we know he's uh, he's a re he's out for blood, you know, he's jumping right on the duels thing. If you're already in your 20 ranks, you're probably playing duels on the regular, and he's going to lead off with a pacifist who's not very passive. Get that going, get the cultivator out there, see what we can ramp into, and try to keep that thing from pumping or flipping. Although next turn, uh, if we want to, we can solve the problem with Bone Splinter Thrall. Maybe where we need to go. Oh, it's, yeah, it's where we need to go. Holy cow. Our opponent ha is not shy. Not shy about bringing the beats. Boom. So that's six damage for, t for turn three before we untap for our third turn. Ouchie wah wah. Um, so... Let's get it. let's get that thing off the board before this game goes way south. Down boy. Heal. <laughs> Alright, so we got the double black. Hopefully we can get another creature. A blister pod would be fantastic. Make me feel great about casting Abomination. But otherwise, uh, the other red needs to come along eventually so we can ignite something. But since our opponent's ramping now, we're not in a rush. Looks like we quelled the early uh, storm. So now we can try to take it to the next level. And we got some an interesting choice. I think I'm going to go with the Abomination here. Yes, I will. We've got two creatures on the board. A Twin Bolt would be really unfortunate, but we can still sacrifice our Scion in response and draw a card and then a Abomination would be another card. So he can get rid of our board, but we can get value and reload. And of course, if he doesn't have that, we just kind of roll into the sunset uh, looking beautiful. So he's going to play the kind of vanilla 3-4 wolf. Not that good of a card. So I would have to call that a pretty good turn. All right. We did get to another creature. We have the double red. So we're getting pretty set up. This is uh this is going about as this is going pretty well from here. He'll need to have a really big turn. If he has a Chandra's Ignition, that will be a big negative, but we'll get out Husk so we can at least draw a bunch of cards if he has it. We'll pitch that and go get uh, black mana. As you can see, we lean pretty hard on the black mana. 
Alright. What's it gonna be, 3-4? He's gonna attack. I'm gonna take it. Not gonna worry too much. He's gonna howl pack. Not that surprising. Hit me for four. We only need to draw like a creature or two and we can go lethal. Um, so do I sacrifice my... Smothering Abomination? No, I don't think so. I think we'll say bye to Cultivator. I don't have any way to use the mana at instant speed, which is why I paused to think about it a little harder. Let's see, we got 6-6 six, six Husk. Hmm. Not drawn as many creatures as I'd like to, that's for sure. But we are in a bit of a race, so... I think what I'm supposed to do here is sack my backup husk to Bone Splinters and just make sure he has no board so he can't find a creative way to kill us with some combo of Titan Strength or whatever. Alright, more land. Woo! Doing it. So we have the... Pot potentially we may come up one shy next turn um, with Chandra's Ignition on Smothering Abomination. But I think we still go for it. Or at least um, we sacrifice our husk, not the abomination, is what I mean. Because we need more cards. We don't want to land flood to death. Oh my goodness. But apparently that is what's going to happen. Man, we're going to come up one short here too. So I'm not even going to fire off the ignition, because we, we might need it later to come back if he starts getting aboard. One, two, three, four creatures. Okay. Well, there's, uh, the good news is there's 21 creatures left in the deck and 40 cards, so the odds of drawing creatures are looking good. <laughs> and if we can get one of them to a five power, we can just kind of take the game out of nowhere. But in the meantime, we're at the mercy. Oh, that's a creature. Oh, please don't die. <laughs> I will be so sad if he has a way to kill Gitrog. Now, since he didn't have a way to kill Abomination, if he does kill this, we'll know he top-decked it. <laughs> oh, wait. I could have played another land. I'm stupid. <laughs> I'm not used to playing with Gitrog. Very first time I play him, I miss my land drop. My second land drop. Boo. CGB bad. <clears throat> Gitrog monster good. Look at that beauty. Oh my gosh, what a gorgeous card. <laughs> Legendary Frog Horror, ladies and gentlemen. So here comes a, another Breakneck Rider as our opponent goes wide to try to deal with Gitrog, the monster. But... <coughs> bless me. Um, looks like he won't be able to. Away with you, land! I change you into more blister pods. Remember how I said I needed a blister pod? Boom! Ah, froggy wins. <laughs> so that was red green wolves. All right. Kapow, indeed. I like that one, Mortivor. Kapow. Blam. I can't tell what that one is, Yonder. Uh, is that a trophy? I don't know what that is. But thank you anyway for your emojis, I think they're called. I'm not cool. I'm not a cool. I'm not one of the cool kids who knows what to call the little things. <laughs> Gitrog always clutches it, dude. All hail the Gitrog. Totally worth it, right? Drawing about 10 lands in a row to get to a Gitrog monster? I think so. Chugging some trail mix before I face my enemy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. 
Hand is slow. Our opponent is mulliganing. We are on the play. I think that lets us get away with a slow hand. So we'll try this. The initial colors are in good shape. But going tap land, tap land in this format can be really deadly against the wrong opponents. But he's going to open with a tap land himself. That is a welcome sight for me. That's an untapped land, which is very clutch and exactly what I could want to draw. And I think in this scenario, even though we have several interesting choices, hmm, I think I actually want to lead with this because if he doesn't play a spell, it will flip and then I can have a pretty big turn where I go both of these. But if I play this, next turn I can likely cast one of these. So I think it's worth the gamble. Let's find out. Because you remember the other side of this guy uh, makes your creatures cost one less to cast. And is also a 3-3 beater. So he's pretty effective on the play because not our, your opponent won't always have a 2-drop. Now, of course, I said that. I'm sure they'll have something. Oh, timer's running. Timer's running. Ooh. Now we just have to wonder if they have Languish, but I think regardless, we play out. Now, hmm. I am back. I have returned. Okay, guys, we can we can start playing Magic again. Peepee's here. Alright, um, I think we want to Your track. Your may continue. Yeah, I think I do want to track. I will continue to let the world rotate. Sound out of breath, dude. Did you run upstairs? Yeah, no, I walked up five flights of stairs to get to my fucking room. Select a That's player or do. planeswalker. There is only eight. There's nothing on the battlefield. Like, the guy's got nothing, and it needs me to select a player or planeswalker. Fun. <laughs> uh, you, you missed it. Gitrog uh, clutched it. Clutched our first uh, game Sweet. with the Jund, Jund aristocrats here. Not the Jund value or... Jun mid-range or whatever, you, or Jun control, but very much my Aristocrats deck, so not blatantly ripping off your idea. Uh, there, see, I, it doesn't bother me. Like, like, decks on this game are just ideas that people have to see. It's nothing, like, people can take credit for, because, like, the ideas of the decks are already implemented in the game. You just have to be able to see them. Yeah. And taking credit on what someone saw first is not something I care about, so... Ah, cool. That's that's an infamous territory that I don't tread. <laughs> Indeed. All He's right. like, oh, he built my blue-white control deck. The fuck you mean? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like every blue-white control deck is going to be the exact same minus like five or six cards. Oh, yeah, man. Yep, yep. Jundy craddies. Well, I'm going to leave the... I'm going to leave the party for a while to watch a movie because I have okay. dinner and I don't want to play magic and eat All right. because it's greasy. Later, pee, -pee Squeeps. Thanks for stopping by. Alright, so... Oh, oh, that's a good draw. Um, Now, we don't exactly want to get into a tussle with Graveblade. We really don't. Man... If we did, of course we could flip Lily, but I don't think we have anything of consequence to get back yet. Now, if we play Lily, we can still activate a clue. If we don't play Lily, we can play Abomination. But if we activate the clue first, and we draw a land that enters the battlefield untapped, we can play the Abomination, and if we don't draw the land, we can play Lily. Ugh. You guys get all that? So, I think that's what I want to go for. I want to at least see if I can uh, dig my way to an even more productive turn, since they're both kind of medium. All right, that's a good card. I think it can wait. Wait a minute. Oh, my guy isn't flipped anymore. I'm a, I'm a doofus. I failed. I failed at magic, everyone. I didn't do it right. Um, so let's get aggressive. He's at 11. Let's go ahead and make this play. It's, ve it's a very aggressive play, but since we drew the splinters, we can do it. Yep, the werewolf flipped. Nighthawk got me. Me and my... S 
You know what? I played horrible in Innistrad last time around, and it was always because I would get in my head that a card did something, and then it would flip, and it wouldn't be doing that in the moment I would be expecting it to. That 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 just there was a card, um, Mayor of Avabrook, I believe it was in the original Innistrad that gave all humans plus one plus one on the front side and gave all werewolves plus one plus one on the back side, and everybody at uh, the event that I went to. For some reason, like, humans was the big deal that weekend. So I played against this deck uh, three rounds in a row, and every time I would forget, like, which tribe was getting the bonus. And it was a real nightmare for me. So I have, like, there is, like, trauma in my past when it comes to remembering that a werewolf flipped or didn't flip. It It, it is, uh, yeah. Anyway, that's a little, that's a little no longer important uh, back-in-the-day story for y'all. But that was a quick game. I mean, we just got right out of the gates and pretty much smashed him. And that was some kind of a UB control list, it looked like. Didn't control very much. Whoa, 120 coins? That's nuts! Since when do they start paying that, if they're even actually paying it, right? Because I, I always forget to look at the actual mounts and do the math. I just... I like a like a fool. I trust that they're giving me the the coins they say they is. Hmm. And there's something I really like now. Um, the last Junkrat deck wasn't that aggressive. I mean, it could be aggressive. You play your spells and attack with your creatures, but they were mostly like one ones. Obviously, attacking with Elvish Visionary isn't a big play. But when you like flip your Duskwatch Recruiter and your Tireless Tracker starts growing off clues, you're actually attacking with some pretty big creatures quickly. So it plays a lot more rather than a combo deck, which it really was like a Husk combo deck. Now it's much more of a um, beatdown deck that also has a combo finish if you need it with Nantuko Husk, Smothering Abomination, and uh, Chandra's Ignition. So. I do think this deck is even better than it was in the past. I played a good mashup with Gemini. I'm trying to remember what deck he was running. But the de but uh, John Kratz held up really well. What was he running? He was running Ramp, I believe. But I could be wrong about that. Don't hold me to it. Um, he, he would probably remember. Oh yeah, I think... I, I'm Actually, I'm pretty confident it was his Naya Ramp deck. And the deck held up really well. So is Nissa good enough to make this hand a keep? I mean, it's not a great hand, but we've got a removal spell and a planeswalker. It's hard to demand more, so let's give this a whirl. Lumbering Falls for the opponent. Tireless Tracker for us. Not gonna try to save the cute Evolving Wilds Tireless Tracker combo. Most of our clues, as you will probably see, go unsacrificed because it just makes so many, but uh, I would rather make sure that my lands line up well for the rest of the game. Jace, right off the bat. So our opponent, pretty uh, good looking draw so far for our opponent. Doesn't look like a walk in the park. There's a good card. We'll see if we can uh, use it in an effective way this game. We'll need a Nantuko Husk to kind of fuel it. That or our Tireless Tracker will need to eat plenty of cluesies. But right now, the lineup I see is Thrall, Nissa, Tracker. And he's got a wolf. Okay. I think everything in my deck is sorcery speed, so I, I solemnly swear not to cast things on your turn. Oh yeah, attack. Attack! <laughs> oh, what's he doing? Messing with me? Jesus, Pete's. <laughs> Alright. Get your loot. Maybe it's a uh, blue-green tempo wolves. I don't know. I wish I could be looting right now. Nissa to the house. Nissa to the token. Alright. See what our opponent wants to do with us. This guy has a name. Go, hey, hey. I don't know if that's the kind of hey he did. It might be hey, or hey, or hey, hey. Who knows? 
like that Bud Light commercial with the what's up that probably nobody remembers because I'm old. Oh well, tightening coils, interesting. What is our opponent up to? Probably up to attacking me with a 2-3. Yeah, I'm not wrong there, am I? Does he attack me or Nissa? I might just take it if he doesn't attack Nissa. Two cards in graveyard, two lumbering falls, which could be an issue. Plant! Jump in front, plant! Yeah! Plants are pretty much fodder at this point, anywho. Oh, nice. They're the right kind of fodder, too. Let me show you what I mean. <laughs> Clue! Uh, death to the 2 3? I mean, do I care about the 2 3? I have to block it. I mean, I'll have to block it with the carrier thrill. Or I could kill the Jace. I guess Jace is the safer long term kill. <laughs> what kind of deck do you suggest for a person who just finished all the stories and have unlocked basic cards? Um, something aggressive. Uh, probably, uh,. Green white kind of creatures and pump spells deck because those still blindside me every now and then, even though I've got all the cards unlocked. Something aggressive, definitely. Uh, Thopters, if you can build it. I'd pretty much build Thopters as soon as I could because it's very consistent and hard to deal with as a as a deck. All right, um, three two wipes his whole board. <laughs> Uh, usually I save ignition for something juicier, but we don't have red. Never mind. I was thinking about using it this turn, but we do not have the red mana. So what should I do? Tracker can draw a card. Nissa can make a plant. Pretty much gums up the board. I'm not very worried about him attacking me right now. Let's uh, start with a clue. And we can use our black mana for it. Or, no, we'll leave one green. There we go. Like that? Nope. Like that. Okay. Well, you're not going to get uh, an amazing amount of wins with just the unlocked cards. Like, it's hard to get your grind on in the beginning, dude. Uh, that much I can promise you. You know, you're, you're taking the hard road. But, you yeah, know, you got to stick with it. You could, uh, the AI has a tendency to build decks that are actually really tough on aggro decks. Um, so I still recommend aggressive decks because I think that's where you should kind of start the journey. But uh, it, you'll have to unlock much more powerful cards to be more competitive. That's kind of the way. That's, that's how they get you to pay, you know. It's kind of their business model. So right now the grind is going to be tough. You're going to lose some games. But, you know, you could um, watch streams like this, and maybe we'll be able to show you some ways to tune your decks, make them better. All right, there's a Disperse. All right. It gives me the impression he may not have better creatures to play. I was holding this Bone Splinters because I thought he may have an Outland Colossus or something like that that I absolutely need to remove. Bounding Crassus, okay. He really wants to get at Nyssa. Gonna tap my 2-3. Well, we can trade with this Timber Pack Wolf. We can chump block the 2-2. Two -two. Nissa can take 3 damage, go down to 3 loyalty. Alright, so we'll do it like that. And now we want to try to do our best to find a red mana, because the board is getting a little messy. Now, we're keeping up okay. Like, I'm not that worried, but... Now, do I want to sack this clue? No, I might need that Scion. I might need that Scion. Let's not be too short-sighted. It's just so tempting to draw that card, you know what I mean? All right, so let's continue to build the board. Let's play our land and... Oh, I should have played my tracker first. Ugh, I got short-sighted again. Wanted to make my Sylvan Advocate a big old 4-5. Oh, let's see. 
Since we already did that, let's draw our card and try to make a better turn. Blister Pod. I mean, that's okay. But still. Oh, actually, we can do it like this. Uh, we can go Tracker, Cultivator. We can take out the... can take out the Crassus. Okay. Pretty good. It's okay. It's not great. It's okay. Like I said, I didn't want to use the Bone Splinters until I was sure he didn't have something like an Outland Colossus, and I'm pretty sure he doesn't based on how he spent his last turn, which is why we're firing Bone Splinters off now to get rid of the Crassus. He's got a Void Mage. What's he going to bounce? Probably the Sylvan Advocate, so he has another good attack. Yep. And does he go after Nyssa again? If he does, we can try to trade off with his Thief. If we care. Okay, he's going after us with Thief, so we have to block it. So we'll try to trade off with it. We can let Nyssa take that hit, but nah, we'll we'll just save uh, loyalty, and we'll save one Scion. Because we may, may need the blocks. Um, what kind of booster should I buy right now? Um, probably Oath of the Gatewatch has the highest concentration of power. Like, that's, that's what PP says, and I agree with him. I think his logic for that is correct. I think Oath of the Gatewatch has the highest uh, current level of power of any of the booster packs. Pretty much the most common question I get, along with uh, where can I find your deck list? And the answer to that is Magic Duel's Helper. Alright, Disciple of the Ring. Um, last I knew this card did absolutely nothing because of the bugs, and I don't think our opponent even has a bunch of spells in their graveyard. They have a Disperse is the only thing they could have sacrificed. I mean, if Disciple does work, a Disperse is all they have for it. That's pretty. That's a pretty bad Disciple. Alrighty, here we go. I guess it's Ignition time. You guys ready? It's gonna be fun. Let's try to do it in a way that gets us the most value and gives up the least creatures. And I think I found that way. If we just do it on our biggest creature, I mean, they're both four power, so we'll do it on the one with the lower toughness. I'm trying to get my taps right. Okay. There we go. Uh, finished game, or do we want to accept the concession? Um, let's accept the concession. Uh, he's not coming back from that one. So, there you go. We didn't have Nantuko Husk or Smothering Abomination, but we still were able to pretty much brick wall his Simic deck and get the victory. So that's kind of, that's pretty much what I was talking about with I think the deck is more resilient and even better now. I thought I accepted the concession. Am I still playing? I swear I hit the button to, whatever, doesn't matter, right? <laughs> Freaking duels. <laughs> I, I tried to. I, I swear I tried to accept it. <laughs> but here we are. <laughs> So now I will dirtle my way to victory. <laughs> I thought I... Dude, I swear I accepted it. Oh, well. Let it go. Let it go. Words of wisdom from a Disney princess. Oh, good thing we killed that timber pack wolf before his cousin showed up. His, his uh, pack mate. His homie. Keep that tireless tracking. We be tracking. Let's uh, get big, 
get big fast, Amazon style, and uh, bring the beats. <laughs> Nighthawk, you sound so ruthless, dude. I know you're a big softy. Mercy is for the weak. <laughs> Indeed. I know you're a big softy, though. <laughs> Alright, so that was a good one. Let's power up for another. And see if we can't get, you know, some... Uh, maybe somebody can play ramp deck... Maybe somebody can play some Is It Prowess. Um, a white aggro, which has been popping up more and more, and I probably need to do a video of because I've been playing against it so much lately. Uh, not on here, on iOS, but I find that iOS is gen generally speaking a uh, a pretty advanced metagame compared to the others. Um, is Nighthawk from No Goblins? It is. Also, he has his own YouTube channel. If you don't watch that already, you should. So, just... See his name right there? Look for it on YouTube. It's awesome. He's got some unique builds. He's still cracking packs, but he has most of the collection, so he's he's got he's got he's got it going on over there on the Nighthawk YouTube channel. He's also my admin, don't he's my moderator, don't make him mad. That's what that sword means. Cause for some reason, I mean I don't know what his day job or what his evenings are like. But he seems to have plenty of time to hang out and chat with us. And, uh, yeah, deserves uh, some acknowledgement and rewarding. I don't know if anybody... We've got some regulars here, and I love you regulars. But I don't know, man. Nighthawk's here so much. I just kind of wonder. I wonder what, what his life is like. <laughs> I guess like me, I guess. Where uh, I can't think of something better to do with the next couple minutes of my life at any point in the day than play some magic, or listen to some magic, or do something with some magic. <laughs> Mortivar, Mortivar, you're asking for it. You know Nighthawk loves his Flame Shadow Conjuring. <laughs> also, though, I don't know if you'll bother him by saying it's bad. I think he readily accepts that it is not exactly a perfect card. That is not... Um, a uh, try-hard card. I think he readily uh, embraces the badness of it. <laughs> I think he knows. I, th I don't think the gig. I don't think the jig is up. So this hand, this is this hand's gonna be awesome. I'm curious to see what our opponent does. They're showing me Abzan colors, but if they don't have interaction for our board, holy cow! I have down. I have downtown. Haha! -ha permission to rampage him, my lord. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but it's funny. <laughs> downtown. <laughs> permission. I have downtime. Permission to rampage, my lord. Have your way with them. <laughs> They're asking for it. <laughs> ah. One reason I gave it to him is I know he probably doesn't have a bone in his body that's out to just make people mad. <laughs> Oops. Wrong land. That's okay. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It's all gonna be fine. Bringing it! <laughs> We're even playing first main. Apparently I got giddy somewhere and forgot how to play magic. So he's gonna trade with the tokens, which could mean languish, which would be fine, I guess. He wouldn't get my husk, because I played badly. Should have curved out the smarter. Oh well. Um, Bloodflow Connoisseur plus Liliana. I mean, yeah, that's a fun, that's a fun little trick that you can do. There is no doubt about that. That is a fun, a fun experience. So he's going Graveblade Blister Pod. So he's like uh, Aristocrats himself. He's gonna be disappointed when I outcrats his crats. Outcratulate him. Um. All right. So I really, 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 really want this off the table. If I attack him, maybe he'll trade, but maybe he won't. I don't think that's a good play. Not overall. Which might take the sting out of our husk uh, combo, which I was hoping would just be lethal this turn, but a blister pod is a little headache. There's no doubt about that. 
little blister pod headache. Let's see, just see what happens next turn. What we got up here? I didn't even look. Uh, corrected burrow. Oh, he's got bone splinters. Uh oh, no husk fun for us. Boo! We're gonna have to draw a new one. Gonna have to draw a new one. A Gitrog monster would be nice off the top. A smothering abomination. We're gonna need some action. Oh wow. Um, what the heck is that? Vigilance, trample, haste. What? Okay. I mean, that's not great on any of these. I guess Vigilance is dandy on the Marauder, right? I mean, he is he is teching out. <laughs> Here in Germany, it's 10 minutes till midnight. That means a quest reset. Wow. You, you, you are hard on the grind if that is, like, the top of your uh, agenda. Oh, he's coming. Here he comes. I mean, that's not indestructible. That's Vigilance, Trample, and Haste. It means I still kill your creature, so it doesn't do too much. It lets me get in for some damage, which may make a difference. When you have Chandra's Ignition, nickels and dimes go a long way. But if he puts that on the Grave Blade, I'm going to pretty much have to throw a creature away every turn to get to him, and that is not fun. It'll be a decision. He also, we have to worry about everything that could come out of his hand, thanks to haste. All right, let's go. Really want you back. I want you back. Down, down, down. Yep, did it. <laughs> Not, no regrets. Six more boosters till you have them all. Congrats, dude. Savor it, because once you have them all. <laughs> you you're kind of like I wish I had a reason to grind again, but now I got all this all these boosters. <laughs> Whoa, Sweden, checking in. What's up? Six minutes to midnight over there. Welcome. Thanks for hanging out late with me. The old creepy doll avarice amulet. Oh yeah, the the super combo for sure. How much damage am I even taking? I'm not even paying enough attention. Flood is real now. I mean, we couldn't draw lands. It's just so bizarre. This deck is flooding, and then we have that other deck that just couldn't even draw lands. Mm. I guess we can gang block him if he wants to come in again. Ugh. Just feels so wrong. Green, green, green. Or black, black, black. Alright. <sighs> Feels a lot like our first game, but I don't know if Gitrog will be on top of our deck to save us. I would certainly appreciate it if he would show up. Our Abzan opponent, Deadweight. Okie dokie. I guess he really wants to keep getting in there with, uh, with his guy. I mean, you're using Deadweight on, on that critter. I guess you do what you gotta do. Great. Greets from Croatia? Hey, dude. We got people all over the place. Trying to soak up some advices. I hope I can be helpful. Um, hmm. Well, if he's going to gain delirium at instant speed, I guess I'll block the 4 I don't want to take the 3 if I don't have to. All right. But, yeah, we'll just keep on getting nickel and dimed here from his grave blade. We don't want to go too much lower, though. We're just trying to hold on and maximize our draws to get out of this. Okay, he's gonna he's gonna fidget with his equipment. I don't know why you would give something vigilance after tapping it to attack. <sighs> well, that's not where you want that draw. My goodness. My goodness. I feel I am getting deck trolled in the at the moment. Everything was so beautiful. I thought our opening hand in most situations would have been, you know. Turn three husk, which I messed up. Turn four big ignition, win the game. Our opponent had the bone splinters though, and since then we've just been waiting to draw anything else that we can ignite, and it has not happened yet. We have a lot more options in our deck than we've had in the past. All right, it's time to get our blocks on. It's 
kind of a nombo having trample on that 1-4 death touch. Hmm. Finally. Alright, down you go. And since he has the, um, this thing that can grant haste, I think I just have to sit back. Because he could play just about anything. Well, it has trample too. Ah, <sighs> more misplays. I should have attacked. I forgot about the trample. I know it can give haste. Oh man, flesh bag. Down go the token. I wonder if he's gonna keep flesh bag out. Nope, he doesn't. He could have got it some damage through. <laughs> come on, come on. Ooh, buddy. Oh, and he just used a flesh bag. I think that means I can play this. Okay. Let's see what happens now. That can pull us out of this. If it gets to live. So, I don't know if we're really up against a good deck or not. I mean, he's got a lot of the death effects, and he's got this weird... Oh, boy. <laughs> Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Um, if we top deck a land and it's red, we can double ignite? Oh, shoot! Shoot. What the heck am I supposed to do now? Gain some life. <laughs> We're gonna gain some life. <laughs> he gets to draw. <laughs> we go up to 20. That's how much life we just gained from the Chandra's Ignition. He's gonna take it. Okay. Oh man, do I hold this? I think I hold this in case I draw a Tireless Tracker now. Uh, there's nothing I can do with much more mana. No! No! Aw, oh, boo! What a what a load of ah, No! It's not right. At least I get a Zombo. He's down to eight. This is, this deck is weird. Look at how many cards he's gone through. He still doesn't have Delirium. I mean, <laughs> so bad. Okay, Titanic growth. Now he has Delirium. Look what I get. <laughs> That's what I get. Oh my god. And Haunted Cloak! Yes, of course! Oh my goodness. It's just... Oh, it's been a sad one. This is a sad one. What could I do? I mean, I guess the best draw would be a Smothering Abomination? Oh! Okay! Um, can we kill him? One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. If it survives a turn, we can kill him. All right. All righty. Uh, let's put this out there. Let's see what happens. <laughs> hey, this is how we play magic, you guys. We do this every day. We do this every single day. We just top deck. We ask our deck, and it gives. It just gives and gives. You know why? Because we're so kind to it. We're just so kind to our decks. No! What the hell? No! No, no, no. It's not right. We are kind to our decks, but this person is kinder. Oh, no. Don't do that. <laughs> What on earth is happening? What is happening? <laughs> oh no! What can we draw? What can we do? <laughs> All we needed was for the card to live... All we needed was Abomination to live one turn. Oh! Oh man, is this good enough? One, two, three, four, five, six, it's not. No, it is. It is if he doesn't block. One, one, two, three, four, five, six. If he doesn't block, 
So we're just going to make the dumbest attack ever, and we're going to cross our middle fingers. Okay. Don't block. Don't block. Don't block. No! No! Oh. <laughs> um, boo. Oh, wait! Oh, God, dude. It still works. Look. Look, now he... Now his toughness is too low on the Marauder. The ignition is going to kill it. We did it! We did it! <laughs> we did it! Die to your demon! Wait, what happened? Oh wait, it's my creatures, not his. Oh, I got excited. I thought when his creatures died, he'd lose life too. My bad. I failed. And he's still giving me the summons. <laughs> now he's just trolling me for sure. Now he's showing off. Oh, uh, my bad. I thought I had it for a second because I forgot that Kothafed was only uh, when my permanence died. Oh, well. Boo on me. Boo on that. That game was a flood-tastic mess. <laughs> I wonder what his planes was for. I didn't ever catch what his little white splash is for at all. He must have something convergy in there. But it wouldn't be a CGB stream if I didn't misplay horribly uh, like I did on the third turn of that game and lose to a completely random, ridiculous pile of cards. <laughs> it just wouldn't be one of my shows. So, I hope you guys find a way to enjoy that as I often try to find a way to enjoy it. If you think that's a lot of gold, man... I, I just unlocked all the cards on iOS, and I have over 25k of gold still. I'm like set for a few expansions to come on iOS. It's ridiculous. Like that's where I play most of the time, and it's a lot more competitive there, so that's where I try to tune up my decks. And then I come in here and I lose to the fog meta. <laughs> yeah, I can't buy anything but foil with my gold, and I'm not buying foils. It's, it's not my style. If you like foils, if you like the bling bling, so be it, but foils are not something I indulge in. I just don't. <laughs> ah, besides, jealousy is no fun. No reason to hashtag jealous. There's always somebody who has it better than you. There's always somebody that has it better than me. Whoever has it best in the world, I don't think I know. I don't know them. All right, let's uh, see where this one goes. It's a good hand. It's a good hand. Man, that game. I just got to wipe. I got to get that dirt off my shoulder. We did. I misplayed horribly on turn three. After that, we did all we could. And we still just got completely owned. Just completely owned. iOS's iPad and iPhone. <laughs> I've never been so dominated. I mean, flesh bag, flesh bag. Plummet. Just just so dominated. That ridiculous cloak to go with his Kothafed. How come is it that every single day somebody Kothafeds me to death now? Like, when did that card become the gold standard for just wrecking my hopes and dreams? <sighs> ah. Back crack. Yep. All right, so maybe we're playing some white aggro that isn't aggro at all? What do you think? Are they going to Gideon's Reproach, Celestial Flare me? Do I have any way to take advantage if they do? I could play the Rot Shambler. Yeah, I guess we'll do that. Rather than get Nissa down? Yeah, I guess. It's not like Nissa's going to do much right away. Not when he's not playing anything. I just thought he'd Celestial Flare or Gideon's Reproach me and I'd be able to keep the pressure on. I mean, what else are you doing if you're turn one, turn two, white, white? What kind of hand did you keep? But apparently I am overestimating my opponents as normal these days. All right, so tireless tracking. Yeah, yeah, love that card. So what do you want to do first if you're this hand? Do you want a tireless track clue or do you want a Nissa? With Westvale, it's tempting to Nissa, but I can't expect to hit all my land drops and play that on time. 
Um, but if he's not going to do anything, I think the better play... Well, we don't have any more lands, so... If I don't get my clue now, I might not get it next turn. I may as well go get my clue. If he's planar outbursting me, he's still another turn away from that action. So Nis is gonna chill. Nis is gonna chill. We got the double red for Chandra's Ignition. Sylvan Advocate can be a 4-5, which is a good ignition target. And this can tracker can be a 4-3, just by sacking a clue. Whoa! Whoa! What are you doing? It's that flip card. Uh, if it gets equipped, which he has no equipment, uh, and what is it, at the end of the turn, he can exile something? The beginning of your end step. If it's equipped, transform it. And then it becomes like a 4-4 four -four that exiles something? I mean, if, it, if that ever actually happens, we can bone splint the crud out of it. So I'm going to activate this clue. And if I draw a land, I'll Nissa, And if I don't, I'll advocate. But right now I want to hit my land drops, especially with Tracker, on the battlefield. And with an advocate in my uh, two two advocates. Yay, we did it. Got there. Uh, yeah, it is pretty consistent. We got flooded and I misplayed horribly and we lost a game. But otherwise, this deck, I think, is, you know, the bomb diggity, dude. I love this deck. Now, if I plus one, plus one counter, I get to stay aggressive. Ooh, I like being aggressive. I'm going to plus one, plus one counter, even though I have Westvale Abbey. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, that, 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 I, I just got juiced. I'm getting there for eight. <laughs> I like being aggressive. I like being aggressive. <clears throat> Taking some of those Nissa steroids. All right. Your move, dude. With Chandra's Ignition, I think being aggressive is just better, because now if I untap, <laughs> like, if I untap with any of these creatures, I think I win. So, yeah, we swung for 8 there on turn 5. I mean, just, yeah, it's just so much more aggressive than the old Kratz. And he's going to play Avacyn at Sorcery Speed. I can't get behind that. That's, that, that ain't, that ain't the way to do it. That ain't, that ain't how you roll with the Avacyn. She, she deserves better. She just deserves better, dude. She's an amazing card, and you played her at sorcery speed. Like, what? <laughs> Ugh. I just can't get behind it. Can't get behind that. All right. <laughs> Make a clue. John was ignition for the rubs. And attack. And let's see here. Pause. Start. Concede. So he can have the gold. Ugh. But we'll take the win. White. White control, I guess? White do nothing control? Hard to know how to document that one. Alright. I don't know if he could have survived all that stuff I could do to him, Mortivore. I don't know, man. <laughs> didn't even him. I didn't even kill him. <laughs> I didn't even kill him, Nighthawk. I gave him the gold. <laughs> Unfollowed indeed. Mr. No Mercy. <laughs> uh, just trying to pay a little of that gold forward. Obviously, it's not like huge priority for me right now. Let's see, if he plays Avacyn on my turn. He would still take a minimum of three. And then a creature would die, so the Rot Shambler would grow. And if the Rot Shambler grew to four or higher, which it would because he'd, kill, he'd have to kill something then the Chandra's Ignition would have still been lethal. He couldn't have survived, even if he played it at instant speed, Mort. He could not have survived. <laughs> the only difference between the Kratz list on Magic Duel's Helper and this one is I'm running four Evolving Wilds again. I 
cut down the basics and uh, I cut one Westvale Abbey for to to get myself up on four evolving wilds. So I think it's like four swamp, four forest, one mountain, four evolving wilds, one Westvale Abbey, and a bunch of duels. But that's because I didn't know I was going to be playing this deck, and we just kind of got into it. How do I stream on iOS? I don't. This is Xbox One. iOS is where I have uh, where I do most of my playing, and I have a ridiculous amount of gold on there, and that's how I started. Uh, that's how I started talking about it. So yeah, I do a lot more playing over there. I just stream every day over here on the Xbox One. I pretty much got the Xbox One so I could participate in some of the NGA tournaments, and then I fell in love with streaming. So now I use it as my stream machine. Yeah. How many games have we played with Kratz? Uh, that was uh, five or six, one of those. So I think we can get one more. I think we can get one more. Hopefully we, uh, it'll be a good one. We got our kind of uh, lose to some ridiculous black-green Kothafed deck out of the way because that seems to be our new tradition is every video I lose to Kothafed at some point. And hopefully this one will just be a nice little battle that we can go out on a high note with. I really want to try against an Is It Prowess. I don't know how this deck would do against that. Um, I've seen it. This deck has done well against a ramp, but I'd be happy to try it against some more ramp because you can never nail down that uh, matchup enough because people sure love it. Um, nope. And fine. Not great. <sighs> I mean, can you teach me how to stream on iOS, LOL? Google how to stream on iOS, I guess. That's the best I can do. I know I can record. Like, I all I have to do is run a lightning cable to my Mac and use QuickTime, and I can record what I'm doing on my iOS. But stream? Nope. Not sure how to stream. Maybe a 6-6 flyer is not that bad. I, I mean, I lose to it every freaking day, dude. So <laughs> at this point, I am not an authority on saying whether or not Kotha Fed is a good or bad card. I'm really not. <laughs> I, I am just the pawn who gets his butt kicked by it. But it should be noted that usually once a day, we also kill the opponent with their own Kotha Fed with triggers. I know we did that yesterday, too. <laughs> Uh, Loot wants to play prowess against me. Sadly, I think I'm at the end of my rope for the day, dude. I'm feeling a bit burnt out. My back's starting to hurt. It means I need to go stretch. So I'm an old man. I'm like 34, so I gotta do that kind of thing. It's really lame. If I put Liliana out there and she gets bolted, there's nothing I can do. If I put her out there after putting Husk out there... Uh, yeah, I think what I want to do is put Husk out. So let's get in there. But yeah, I'm at the end of my day. I really am. This is gonna be this is gonna be our go home show, and uh, there is a bronze sable returning to make sure that our life is difficult. Can't let us get out of here without confronting another bronze sable. I mean, will it have nimbus wings? That's the new question. The champion stood alone between the horde of the returned and the shrine to Karametra. Karamatra? Karamatra. Cutting down scores among hundreds. She would have been overcome if not for the aid of the temple guardians whom Karamatra... Hey, hey. Don't... You just... You just totally screwed up my reading. My dramatic reading. Guardians whom Karamatra awakened from the Theriad. Yeah, so it has no ability because we had to be able to read all that crap. <laughs> oh, I love this game. All right. Let's get busy with our Nantuko Husk here. It's going to be awesome. Don't you worry. Lily, take the stage. Glad to see you're still here for a game, watching the hours and hours you upload to YouTube. Yeah, I know. It's a lot. You don't have to watch it all. But I appreciate you watching any of it. I know I, I know I throw it all out there. I just don't know which what people would want and what they wouldn't want. So I'm just trying to give it all. You can just you have it all. You can watch it on YouTube. You can watch it on Twitch. You can do all those things. All right. 
Nighthawk with the good point. Let's flip before second main because we don't want to lose that priority. I'm on top of that, but he definitely saw it coming, and that's a good point. you got to think about when you're going to lose priority. We wouldn't have a second main phase if I didn't flip Liliana right frickin' now. That was really close to a lethal attack, too. I only, if I had this uh, one more, like, carrier thrall out there. I could have also done sacking shenanigans in the first main, but then I think he would have blocked for sure. So, let's get that back. You want board. You want a board presence with this Kratz deck. You don't care so much for Lily's loyalty. You just want a big old board presence. Opponent hits blue number three. Chief of the Foundry is probably the card that they would most like to have. Let's see what they do have. Perhaps an Esper Zoa. Perhaps another Bronze Sable. Perhaps... Per... What? What, what the... What, what is this crap? Oh no. I've got to do another reading. I've got to do another reading. you got to read the vanilla because what else are you going to do with it? Absolutely nothing. It's vanilla. Stonework Puma. Cat ally. We suffer uneasy ground, unstable alliances, and unpredictable magic. Something you can truly trust is worth more than a chest of gold. I guess he's saying his trusty uh, giant kitty is awesome, to which I agree. Pets are amazing. Okay. Now what? We can't make him forget to block our husk. But if he does, he will die. So let's just find out if he'll forget to block our Nantuko husk. Get in there, boys! He is brave. He's taking a uh, stonework puma and bronze sable out on ladder, man. This guy is... Oh, oh no. Oh, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't block the husk. All right. We'll see if he sticks around once he sees the writing on the wall. Most people don't have the stomach to watch a bunch of Nantuko husk triggers. Um, please activate. It's not... Okay, well, here we go. Game is going to probably screw us, and yep, there we go, sinking. Okay, now we go. That should be enough. Let's see what our opponent does. If he doesn't leave, we'll pause the timer, and he will get paid. So there's the 12 points. It's lethal. All right, let's pay him. <laughs> uh, go get some, go get some better cards, dude. Hopefully next time I see you, you will be a bigger fish in this duel's pond. Back to the ocean with you. Go eat some more minnows. All right. Uh, so. That's what we're going to call it um, right there. Thanks for the GGs. Thank you. And, uh, hey, if you're having fun and you haven't already followed me by hitting the little heart thing on Twitch, you're, w you're welcome to go ahead and do that because this if, if you're having fun with this, it's only going to get better for you. It's only going to get better. There's going to be... Um, I don't have any packs left to open. Sorry. Sorry, dude. I can't. Um, but it's only going to get better. I have a lot more decks to show you, and I try to stream.